Listen to me very carefully. Today's match is one of the closest battles I've had in Scarlet and Violet, and it's a really good battle. As always, hey, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. More than half of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed, and it only takes you a second, and I'm well on my way to 300k trying to hit that this year. It would really help me out. So today's matchup is looking super interesting. He has some very big threats on their side of the field. They got the Orthworm. I'm very afraid of things like the Gengar along with the Noivern, potential choice scarf on the Flamigo. Let's go ahead and jump into the match and see how it goes. All right, so I just want to lead off with my Quagsire. Gonna try to prioritize getting up the Stealth Rock. I feel like it's gonna be pretty important for a few Pokemon on their team as they actually end up leading off with the Blue Slim Jim. Uh, unfortunately for this thing, Quagsire fucking loves Slim Jims and I'm about to demolish this thing's tail, so. Uh, he actually ends up going for the Stealth Rock of his own. We basically just, just trade rocks here, compare sizes. And uh, at this point, I know obviously I cannot Earthquake this thing. Uh, but the good news is, Orthworm also cannot really hurt me. Unless this is Iron Defense Body Press set, I'm pretty comfortable staying in here and just going right for the Surf. Of course, when you're in against an Alaskan Bullworm, you gotta be aware of this thing chopping off its own damn tail at any moment. Which is exactly what it's gonna do. It goes for the Shed Tail there. And now I'm just hoping whatever he decides to Shed Tail into gets the sub broken by my Surf. So he decides to go into the Gengar here. Uh, now that's a good play because Gengar has a lot of coverage against my team, especially Quagsire uh, with the Energy Ball. Uh, luckily, Homeboy doesn't know how to swim that good and the Surf is gonna drown the Beanbag. So that does take care of that. Now, while that does get this Gengar in for free, uh, I'm actually happy with that Shed Tail because now Orthworm unless it gets some recovery, he's not going to be able to go for the Shed Tail again. And I'll tell you what, that type of momentum is pretty crazy to play again. So now, of course, I do not want Quagsire to take an Energy Ball to the face. It's way too early for Balls to the face, so I decide to go into the Muck, who uh, can absorb that pretty damn easily. Look at the absolute sheer size of the Muck in this game. I can't believe, like, why did they do my guy? Like, the camera is so messed up. Either that or Muck is just massive. The absolute unit, can't believe the size of the lad. But my absolute girth allows me to take the energy ball super nicely, and now I can pressure this thing out with the threat of a shadow sneak. However, I know that that Slim Jim wants to come back in for sure. There's no way he's going to leave this Gengar in. Uh, so I'm going to actually predict the switch back into the Orthworm, and I bring in uh, the Brute Bonnet. So I am able to get the prediction correct, and that was actually a really easy one to make, because if the Gengar, for whatever reason, was carrying something like Psychic, uh, Brute Ronit is still, uh, you know, covers for that switch regardless. So now I've got this worm right where I want him. Pause. But I have a couple different options here with this matchup. So I could either go for the Spore, or I could just go straight for the Close Combat, which actually should be close to knocking this thing out with Life Orb, Max Attack, Brute Bonnet. Uh, the Spore is my safest play, because that also covers for a potential switch. He actually just stays in, goes for the Body Press, gets a whole bunch of damage. But I will be now turning you into a zombie, The Last of Us type shit, and I do put it to sleep. So, I'm over here with my little stubby legs, and I'm wondering how much a close combat does to this thing. I'm also trying to think about some potential switches, but there's not much reason to keep this thing alive, uh, considering it's asleep. So, I just go right for the close combat here, but he is actually going to end up switching out here. And this is why I'm very glad that I was able to get this stealth rock up. Um, but he ends up going into the Bagel Boss, which is going to be the Dots Bun. So this is an interesting Pokemon. Uh, I'm not super sure what this thing does. I know it doesn't have very much offensive power, um, but I'm expecting something like a Play Rough. I know that these things generally carry sets like Wish, uh, Protect, and things like that. So I don't really know what to expect. Of course, I cannot put this thing asleep since the Worm is now taking that slot. And I decide, you know, Quagsire is a pretty easy switch into this thing. That's kind of why I really need to conserve the Quagsire. This thing, anytime I bring this boy around, I swear to god, bulky water types are the most useful Pokemon ever, always. So, I bring in Quagmire, this thing ends up going for the body press, so this guy is just pressing up against me all over the place, and uh, luckily I'm able to take pretty much anything this throws at me nicely. However, I know I can't really touch this thing that much in return, uh, so I decide to go for the Surf. It's able to hit everything on his team for some pretty solid damage. R.I.P. Scald. Quagsire no longer has the ability to make his water hot. And now we instead just be, be shredding the waves. So I go for the Surf, he actually ends up switching back into the Orthworm. Never seen an Orthworm come in so many damn times in my life. Uh, but luckily this thing's special defense is Ass Cheeks, and I'm able to, to hit KO it with the Surf. So, Orthworm is taking a nap over there with his eyes open looking very menacing. And uh, after some leftover recovery, Quagsire is in a great spot, and I know that he's gonna have to allocate some type of resources to take the Quagsire down. Whether uh, it's it's gonna be the Gengar, which is his best option, or something like the Noivern with like a Terra Normal Boom Burst. Uh, just gonna have to hit this thing hard specially. So, uh, I go for another Surf here, that thing stays asleep, and finally, 
Jim is down. I don't have to worry about the damn Orthworm anymore. And that actually opens up the game pretty nicely for me offensively and not having the bulky steel type to switch into. I can now kind of play a little more freely. So he now gets a free switch into whatever he wants and that is going to be the Paldean Zubat. Uh, this thing is a massive threat. Considering he has not used his Terra yet, I am expecting this thing to be Terra normal with that Boom Burst. The stab Boom Burst from this thing, potential choice specs. Noivern is a threat. It's able to take advantage of that Terra extremely nicely. Uh, and I decide basically nobody wants to take that, but if anybody has to, it's going to have to be the Brute Bonnet. Uh, who can come in, basically just be Death Plotter, and then I can get a free switch into something more fitting. Does go for that Terra normal. Gets the big ass diamond on his head. My guy is iced out over here. I can't even see a damn thing on the battlefield. Um, and goes for the Boom Burst. Now, it's actually important to note he, he did not switch into Stealth Rock damage. Uh, so rather than expecting this thing to be Choice Specs, it's actually going to be Heavy Duty Boots. Uh, which is actually unfortunate because that, uh, that Stealth Rock damage would have been super convenient. Uh, but at least I don't have to worry about this thing being Specs. But regardless, a Stab Boom Burst is going to do way too much damage to pretty much anything on my team. So the only answer I have to this is going to be Young Paint Dip. Star Raptor comes in. And with that Choice Scarf, I am able to outspeed this thing and pressure it with the close combat. So I basically, I can expect this thing to switch. I could go for the U-turn, but if he doesn't switch out, then I'm in a really bad position. So I decide to go for the safest play, and that is just going right for the close combat. Ready to throw hands, or talons, I guess. Uh, but he is actually going to end up switching, and he brings in the Arcanine. So that's a good switch. This thing is going to come in, scare the shit out of me, gets that Intimidate. Uh, and at minus one non-stab close combat is not going to be quite enough to two-hit KO, even with that Stealth Rock damage. Uh, so that is actually unfortunate. A U-turn there would have put me in a fantastic spot, because now uh, I'm basically forced to switch, but it's really not the end of the world, because I do still have the Quagsire. And unless he goes for the double switch here, um, I should be still in a pretty good spot. So Quagsire is Arcanine's arch nemesis, and I can come in pretty freely here. And again, I can really get some good pressure with this Surf. So. Uh, I come in having not taken too much damage all damn day, I'm having a good time bouncing around. He ends up going for the Psychic Fangs, uh, just I guess to get some neutral damage, but you know, it doesn't do a whole lot as I'm pretty much max defense. After some leftovers, this is a damn picnic out here for my guy, so I do have to click Surf here. I would like to go for the Earthquake for some better damage, but he does have that Flamigo on his side, uh, so a nice switch into that, predicting the Earthquake could, you know, be annoying. But uh, I just decided to go right for the Surf because, like I said, it does decent damage to everything, and he's going to go back into the Bagel Boss. They straight up made a Pokemon a bread dog with bagels on his ears. I don't know how to feel about this Pokemon, uh, but I do know it's actually got an interesting ability. Maybe i got to bust this thing out for a future Wi-Fi battle. Leave a comment letting me know what Pokemon would you like to see on the channel, because I'm down to feature pretty much anything. Any of the new Pokemon, any of the old ones that potentially have new sets, let me know. Anyway, uh, Quagsire is important here, and I know... Uh, that I do want to conserve that, because it's my answer to the Arcanine, and I can't let that go down. I can instead switch into the Sup, because Poison type, this is a fairy dog, it makes sense. However, for some reason this thing gets Stomping Tantrum, predicts the switch into the Muck, goes for that Stomping Tantrum, and that is unfortunate. However, after the Black Sludge recovery, it's looking like I should be able to take one more, and then I can fire off a nice little jab at this guy. So, uh, he actually ends up going for the Tantrum again, of course, and a critical hit is going to knock me out. That could potentially not have mattered. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure on kind of the damage rolls on that, but the Stomping Tantrum prediction was super nice, uh, and unfortunately, Muck goes down for no reason. But now, the absolute legend, Young Hairball, old Heimlich Maneuver comes in, and I figure maybe I can start to set this thing up potentially. Um, I know that this thing, the Bread Dog doesn't have the most offensive power, so I decide I can try to go for some uh, Calm Mines. However, it also has Crunch, so I'm convinced that this thing is over here using TMs in the middle of the battle, and uh, that really sucks. I wasn't expecting the Crunch there. Uh, this is actually a fully defensive Rabska, Bold Nature with max defense, so I actually take it super nicely, uh, and I go for that Calm Mines. But, not going to be able to have kind of the longevity that I wanted with this, but what I can do is go for a Revival Blessing. So, he goes for the Crunch again. I'm just going to go ahead and bring him on back to life because now I'm using items in battle. I got a Revive on my side, boy. Uh, and the Revival Blessing gives me the option to bring back whatever. Now, Muck is the best option out of the two that are Fainted uh, because that does give me uh, a great answer with that Shadow Sneak against the Gengar. Uh, so, I bring Muck back to life. And even if that thing doesn't get used, just having another free switch uh, is super nice. So... Uh, now at this point, I only have one Combine, but I decide to go for the Stored Power, uh, just to kind of see. It goes for another Crunch, and I'm over here just taking these Crunches. You can take bites out of my weird Brain Ball all damn day, but I'm not going to go down. 
as uh, the stored power, unfortunately, with only one Calm Mind is not, you know, quite going to be enough there. But this Rapska is kind of just here for that Revival Blessing support. Plus, this good Bagel Boy is in range to be picked off by, you know, pretty much anything. So, one more Crunch is going to take care of me. And I wasn't exactly able to do what I wanted, but I did get that Revival Blessing off, so we love to see it. Uh, and now that gives me a free switch. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe, just maybe, this Tauros can get something going here. Uh, I do have the Trailblades to boost this thing's speed and uh, also be able to knock this thing out at the same time. So this is uh, Paldean Water Tauros with an interesting moveset. It's got the Endure with the Lychee Berry to boost my attack, plus with that, you know, speed boost from the Trailblades, this thing can get dangerous super quick. So I take it out with the Trailblades, and unfortunately, the Flamigo comes in, and that tells me that this thing is definitely going to be Choice Scarf and even at plus one, I'm not going to be able to outspeed, and a Brave Bird just straight up kills the Toro. So I have a difficult play to make. I decide to go into the Quagsire. I'm thinking I can likely take two Brave Birds uh, from this Flamingo and uh, potentially save the Tauros in the back. It was kind of a tough play. It was like, do I sack the Tauros here or try to see if the Quagsire can take two attacks from this thing? Which turns out I can't because this Flamigo is an absolute beast. The Brave Bird does do enough to take me out. Um, and as long, honestly, I'm kind of fine with this because my win condition at this point is going to be that Choice Scarf Star Raptor if played correctly. So he's down to four Pokemon. He's of course got this Flamingo. He has the Gengar, Noivern, and Arcanine. So. Uh, one more Brave Bird does take care of the Quagsire, uh, but that is fine because now I get the free switch. And you know who is faster than a Flamingo with a Choice Scarf is my Staraptor with a Choice Scarf. I have no other option than to go into Staraptor. And what is unfortunate is I have to basically kind of ruin the longevity and have to take another set of Stealth Rock damage. But sometimes it do be like that. So Paint Dip comes in, take that Rock's damage, and I have a tough play to make. I can predict the switch, go for the U-turn. Uh, but it seems like Brave Bird is going to be my best option. It does uh, you know, enough to take anything out at this point. Um, and it's time to just start poking holes in the team. So he decides to switch, wants to conserve uh, that Flamingo as he goes into the Gengar here. Now Gengar is going to get absolutely obliterated by a Brave Bird. But the implications of this is now I don't really need the Muck with the Shadow Sneak support. As that thing, that's a big threat out of the way. So uh, Brave Bird does take that thing down. And now it's looking like if I switch out at this point, I can actually conserve the Star Raptor for one more switch into Stealth Rock. As in comes the Arcanine. Now Arcanine, this pupper is unfortunate for me because this thing carries the extreme speed and I cannot let Star Raptor go down. So basically, I have to go ahead and sack something to be able to get uh, in my Tauros. So I decide, since Muck uh, wasn't going to be super useful for the rest of the match, I decide to bring this thing in. The Revival Blessing comes in clutch because this allows me essentially a free switch that I would not get otherwise. And Muck does go down to the extreme speed, but that is exactly what we wanted. Uh, because now I can switch in the Tauros, and I can basically... Since this thing took that Stealth Rock damage, um, it is in range to where if it switches in again, it actually dies. That is super important to note. It's in red, and now Arcanine is basically taken care of. He can switch it out, but it just dies to that Rock's damage. So, actually ends up switching out, and goes back into the Flamingo. Now, Flamingo comes in basically as just a Death Fodder switch in. And now that's going to put it to 2-2. Two to two. He has the uh, the Noivern in the back along with that Arcanine. Arcanine is basically accounted for because, like I said, Stalled Rock just takes care of it. So I'm in a great position, and Scarf Star Raptor should be able to uh, kind of clutch the win with that close combat. So we are not out of the woods yet, and we still got to make it happen. So in comes the Noivern, and I know that this thing is going to be faster than me. However, all I got to do is just bring in Star Raptor. So... I'm just going to click the Wave Crash as it's my best damage option here. I don't have a fighting move. He ends up going for the Defog, which is extremely unfortunate. This thing carrying the Defog is now going to make it so that Arcanine can switch in without taking the Stealth Rock damage. So the Wave Crash isn't quite going to be able to knock this thing out. I don't have the correct fighting move for this thing because this is supposed to be an Endure uh, kind of Lychee Berry reversal set. Um, so that is unfortunate. And now the battle is down to 60 seconds left. And so that defog kind of ruined my entire day. I've never, I've never been so disrespected by a defog, I swear to God. I really wish that this was just Specs Noivern. But turns out, gets rid of the Stealth Rock, and now all I've got left is going to be that Star Raptor. And basically, now it's just a fight against uh, the timer, essentially. But with 30 seconds left, it's not even enough uh, to really make the one move here. So what I can do is go right for a nice little close combat right to the diamond on the Paldean Zubat. And with that Choice Scarf, like I said, I am able to take care of this thing. Uh, but what does suck is that the Arcanine now comes in, doesn't take any Stealth Rock damage, and with that extreme speed, it's easily able to take care of Staraptor after taking so much Stealth Rock damage all game. 
Uh, luckily, at least I was able to switch in for free this time because of the defog. But uh, close combat takes care of Neuvern, and now it's down one to one. He has the Arcanine in the red, but the battle timer is now at zero, which is extremely stupid. Game Freak, please get rid of the 20 minute battle timer. It's the one thing that has ruined Wi Fi battles. And uh, it's going to basically make it to this match. Uh, is not going to come to a conclusive end. However, he brings in the Arcanine here. I go for the Choice Scarf Close Combat, which would ordinarily outspeed this thing, but he does have that extreme speed. So, unfortunately, the timer is actually going to come to a close here. And technically, it gives me the win. However, uh, that's definitely a win on his end because with like a one more minute on the battle timer, he would have been able to click that extreme speed. And that uh, was a super close game. That defog at the end was the most clutch thing I have ever seen. I should have seen it coming, to be honest, um, once I noticed that wasn't a Specs Neuvern. But still, super good match. Shout out to the dude. His, actual, his link is in the description. My opponent, uh, I believe, does upload the Wi-Fi battles as well. So go ahead and check him out. And thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.